Hello everyone, this is Randy Malden with Supply Leaders Academy and today we're going to talk about setting goals. Now if you're a goal person who writes down your goals, you know exactly what I'm talking about and this webinar is probably not for you. It's for those people who have not really used goals effectively and really haven't used goals consistently as a way to focus their attention and focus their efforts to achieve the most things. Because you don't want to end up looking like this at the end of the day, all beat up, trying to figure out what happened today, what did I do today? You did a lot of work, had a lot of conversations, got into a few scuffles maybe because your priorities didn't line up with other people's priorities and you didn't want to let go of those priorities or maybe you did compromise. And what we don't want to do is go through life doing what other people want all the time unless it aligns with our own personal goals. Every single day you are fighting for priorities between your family, your career, your boss, any other number of organizations or people trying to get your time trying to get your time and you don't want to do that you want to stay focused on what you need now people may say well you're always about you it's always about you you're only focused on your goals well who else's goals would you focus on because at the end of the day you want to make sure you're getting what you want now don't get me wrong don't misinterpret what I'm saying that it needs to be all about you it just it needs to align with your goals and your personal values to make sure you get the most out of life. You're not wasting time and spinning your wheels on people, places, and things that aren't really there to help you. You want to be like this at the end of the day. You know what you've accomplished. Your team is focused. You're focused. You're getting things done. And that's what we're going to talk about today is how to develop those professional goals so you can be successful. So you can be successful. Now, a little bit about me. I was in the Marine Corps for over 20 years did lots of numerous things, was with, you know, enlisted, was with my brother in Okinawa, was an embassy guard, found my wife while I was going to school, and created a beautiful, beautiful family, which we are now enjoying our lives here in Satellite Beach, Florida. So today we're going to start with self-understanding, laying the foundation, figuring out what's in your bucket, getting down to goals, getting down to business, getting started right now, and then figuring out what to do when we have a setback because we always deal with a setback always 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 deal with a setback something happens that might take us off track might take us off our goals and we don't want that to happen I want to make sure we understand when our goals start to shift we can shift it's okay it's okay so let's start with what's important in your life when you use some goal setting activities to figure out what you want, explain what your dreams and goals are, and motivate you to achieve your goals and understand how to deal with those setbacks. Start with you. What are your goals? Do you set your goals? What are some examples? Some examples for me are to, you know, finish a business plan I have written that I need to write for a client here in the next three days. Once we finish that business plan, we need to present the business plan. Once the business plan is presented, we need to negotiate a deal and move forward. That's an example of a set of goals. Now, longer-term goals are I want to achieve a certain net worth by the end of the year. I want to have a certain net worth by the end of three years, five years, ten years. And by the end of seven years, I want to be working with five different protégés, helping them manage their business so that they can grow their own business and start their own lives. That would be an example. And write that down, write down your goals, review your goals every single day, even if only you just simply review them in three seconds. Say, yep, those are my goals. You know, if you can apply at least 30 minutes to an hour every single day, looking at what you want to get done for the day, your day will be more focused and you will get more done. The things that you need to get done instead of, being pushed around by other people's priorities and then ultimately reward yourself. What does that mean? Meaning you need to celebrate. You need to appreciate those goals and accomplishing those goals so you can be motivated to accomplish more goals, more goals. It's important that when you look at surveys and you go back to, you know, all the different studies, those people who are most successful have goals. They write down their goals and they're personally accountable to their own goals. Now, I know some people think, I just write it down or I'll just keep it in my head. 
thing about keeping it in your head is there's no way to reference back to what your goal originally was because your goal will shift and change, and that's why you get off track. That's why you get pulled different directions. So you want to have your goals written down, focused, and then moving forward every single day to accomplish those goals. And that, we're going to talk a little bit later about personal values, where you are focused on goals that align with your values. So if you're involved with your church, you're going to do things that help align with that involvement with your church. If family is most important right now, you're going to do things and have goals that allow you to align with your family's values and being with your family. Or maybe your career is most important right now. And you're going to look at your career goals and figure out what that is. So you're going to have a balance. And one thing I would offer is that when you're looking at goals, is you want to make sure you have a balanced set of goals. Not all career, not all family, not all financial, not all health, but a balance of four or five different areas to keep you in a balanced world. Now, as you start to develop your goals and start to go into a goal-setting mindset and a goal-accomplishment mindset, think about a mentor, someone who's going to hold you accountable for getting things done. This is somebody who is possibly a friend, but more importantly, someone who's going to ask you the tough questions, challenge you to stay on the right path, and think about what you're doing. Does this really align with my goals? Now, think hard right now. Write down three names. Three names of people who come to your mind and said, okay, these are my mentors. Two active, one passive. Two active, these are people that you talk to at least on a weekly basis and then one pass of somebody that you admire and trust and you just look up to and, you know, maybe just that person that's a far reach right now. So he's not in your circles, but because they're a passive mentor or somebody you want in your circles as soon as possible because they're going to push and stretch you to that next level. Choose your mentor. Write them down. Who are you admiring and emulating? What kind of books do they look for? What kind of books do they read? What makes them important to you? Are they a family member? Are they a boss? Are they involved in your church or your community? Are they involved in your sports team? You know, who are these folks? What makes them mentors for you? Next thing we want to talk about is creating your personal vision statement. Now, this creates the why, the reasons behind your goals. And you want to lay this foundation of your personal vision statement because it allows you to create your goals for the long term. In other words, when I, you know, 10 years from now, wh what's my life look like? I get up in the morning, I have coffee, I have breakfast with my wife, I take my kids to school, and then I do work for three or four hours, then I have lunch with a, with a business partner, then I come back to work, and I work for another four or five hours, have dinner, go to a networking meeting, sit down, do some personal development, and then, you know, turn in for the night. Yeah, and you can add exercise into that, of course. You know, keep yourself fit. So you do that when you get up in the morning before you eat breakfast, maybe, or sometime during the day. So that would be a, an idea of a personal vision. You know, what is that? Well, what businesses are you working on? What networking events are you going to? What kind of people are around you helping you grow? Are they challenging you, or are you the person that's, person that challenges everyone else that makes them think. You want to think of a balance. You want to make sure you have a group of friends that, you know, are challenging you, pushing you, having you hold you accountable to a higher level, not to where you're the one that's always holding other people accountable because if you're not growing, if you're not stretching, you're not going to go to that next level. So think hard about that personal vision statement because once we have that personal vision statement written, written down, solid, then we're going to build some goals. What do I need to do? in, you know, five years to get to that goal, seven years. What do I need to do next year? What do I need to do year after that? What do I need to do next month, weekly, daily? Okay, let's write all this stuff down. And then what ends up happening is that when you wake up in the morning, you review your goals and you know the activities you're doing today are focused on accomplishing those goals, not focused on what other people want you to do. Does that make sense? I hope it does because this is first, first part here is developing this personal vision statement is very, very important. You want to start with identifying your values and defining those values and then writing a mission statement of this is the person I am, what I want to do, and why I want to accomplish it. What's your personal vision statement? Well, what are values? Well, here's an example of all the different values that you might hold 
dear to you. Now they may this is may this is not an all inclusive list, but it does give you an example and something to think about. You know, ability to make decisions and implement them. You find that value. Cooperation with others. You know, Andrew Carnegie was one of his key tenets with anyone he worked with in business was they must get along. Get along and that they don't they must cooperate with others and focus on being and living and working in harmony, not creating discourse and discontent within the group because that ends up really tearing up the group. You don't want to do that. Instead, you want to you know, have a, a good group. You want to work with people. You know, is feeling independent, having a good reputation, being reliable, having privacy, security. Are these things valuable? You know, look at this list. Pick as many as that come to you that you think are important and then put them in order, prioritize them. If you get up to 10, then, you know, put them in groups. One, two, three, and then take the first group and then prioritize that one and then work on the second group and then prioritize that one. These are all different things to look at, but these are examples of values to think about. Now, once you have your values, you want to go ahead and grade yourself. How important are these values to me? And the way we do that, you take this little list right here, okay? You just take this list and you just ask yourself this question. I know what my top core values are. No, not really for me at all. I don't really have values. Partially true. I know maybe four or five of them or two or three of them, but not, not really defined. I know exactly what they are, but I'm not sure what they mean yet. I know what those values are. I know what they mean to me, and five, I live by these values every single day. So that's an example. You want to go through this list and ask yourself, my family and friends, do they know what my values are? When people think of you, they know how you're going to answer a question because they understand what your values are. Your goals are based on your values, and we're going to talk about that. When I need to make a decision, I look at my goals or my values or my values. I live my life according to my values. I do the things that I need to do to be successful. My friends and co-workers, co-workers share similar values. That's when you start to make your mastermind group or your core values with people that think similarly to you. Your company reflects those values. People who know me could likely identify me and list my values. As I mentioned before, they know that, that's at five level. They know what my values are and they know that I live by those values. Take a look at that, score yourself out, and then, you know, Assess yourself. What is my score? How do I live in accordance with my values? Do I do this sometimes? Maybe I need to look at my values. Do I need to value, build my, look at my values to find them exactly what I believe? Am I getting better habits? Do I need better habits? You know, or am I really at the top of my game and I know exactly what my values are? Okay. You know, where are your values? Step one, how are your core values reflected in those areas of your life? How do you see your values in your work? What kind of organization do you work with? At home, your key relationships. Well, what are key relationships? What are key relationships? Define those relationships. It could be your spouse. It could be your boss. It could be a business partner. It could be your chaplain. It could be your community leader. What are those key relationships? Who are your key family members? friends, hobbies, and interests, and do they all work together? Are these all aligned with your values? You know, and how are your core values not reflected? Go and look at these values and see where they're not reflected. What am I doing that does not reflect my values? Because ultimately you want to eliminate those things because you're not going to be in alignment. You're going to be in constant conflict. Now, once we understand our values and we start to build our personal value statement, you know, what's in our bucket list? Meaning, what are the things that we really, really want to accomplish in life? Those things that we want to accomplish in life so we can make a big difference in our lives. You know, and ultimately, at the end of the day, it is that moment when life is no more, we're passing on to the other world, whatever world that is for you. Can you honestly say you lived a good life, that you have no regrets? There's a movie out there, The Bucket List. Jack Nicholson and Morgan Freeman, they basically, they, 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 they're both have cancer. It's terminal. They can die any day. So what they end up doing, because one's a billionaire, one becomes a friend, they end up traveling around the world accomplishing anything and everything they could possibly want to accomplish. And that was their bucket list. That's what they did. Dig deeper and think about those bucket lists, things that you want to accomplish and things that you have to do today. For example, go and look at this picture. If your ideal life 
is to sit on the beach and watch the ocean looking at your bucket, what are those things that I need to do in order to accomplish this life? I need to have a steady job. I need to build investments. I need to build a financial future that allows me to sit around all day and not work or work when I want to. You know, how can I get started? What actions do I need to take in order to fill my bucket? How are you going to get there? You know, find goals that motivate you, that make a difference. Make sure those goals are have spirit, create an action plan, have accountability, and then revise as needed. And that's an important part, revise as needed. Because if you're not able to revise your goals, then, you know, as, as you accomplish those goals, you're going to need to have new goals to replace them. And if you're not in a mindset of goal accomplishment, then what ends up happening is you finish those goals, and then you look to your left and look to your right, and you say, what's next? And then you start to wander. And that's when you start to get off of your values. That's when you start to waste time and waste money trying to find out what that next step is. Where when you have defined goals, you're like, yep, oh, done that. Move on to the next one. Move on to the next one. So what goals do you want to accomplish? Look forward. You know, we have a picture here of a guy that needs to kick it between the goalposts. But he's got to know where the goalpost is. So what are the areas in life you want to set goals in? What are your family goals? What are your health goals? What are your financial goals? And what are your professional goals? Those will be four areas I would offer are that you need to set at least one goal in each one of those four areas or consider at least three. If you have more than that, write them all down, and then you're going to prioritize them, one to ten or one to five or one to twenty-five, and then take the first three and put them in and then work on those ones. Those are none. Go back and do it again. And then, you know, you just constantly write those goals down. How they tie into your vision and your core values. Are they aligned with your core values? Because if they're not, then you say, no. Do they reflect who you are? Are they making you a better person, better than you are today and the person you ultimately want to be? Is there someone in your life that you always emulate and said, I want to be just like him, just like her. I want to be someone like that. And are your goals helping you become that kind of person? You want to make sure your goals stretch you, take you out of your comfort zone, make you think about what you want to do because as humans, we we have one fault in that we can't be bored. We hate being bored. And when we're bored, we think of other things to do. That's why kids get in trouble. They get bored. They like thinking of things to do. So if you don't direct that energy, that energy is going to find an outlet somewhere. So think about the goals that are going to stretch you, take you out of your comfort zone. If you like living in a house and having AC running all the time, then maybe you want to consider going outside in the heat of the day. <laughs> all right, Do something different that makes you appreciate the AC. Stretches your goals, stretches your comfort zones. They won't, if they're too easy, they're not going to excite you. They're not going to make you want to get up in the morning. It's going to be like, okay, yeah, I can do that anytime I want. It's like, well, why don't you do it? Eh, you know, it's just kind of there. You know, so think about it. anytime you want to get it done, you can do it. That's not really stretching you. It's not challenging you. Something's going to make you work hard. Make you work hard. And, you know, possibly you have to take some risks. But you got to think about those. Once you have those goals down, you can assess those risks to make sure that they meet the needs you have. Look at the big picture stuff, that ultimate vision. One day, you want to be sitting at the beach just watching the ocean go by. How long away is that? 10 years from now, 15 years, 20 years from now? Okay, what do I need to do at 10? What do I need to do at 5, 2? Next 12 months, 24 months, what are those things that I need to be doing and getting done? Have goals that have spirit. Spirit meaning specific. The more specific you can be, the more likely you will accomplish it. Have prizes. When you accomplish those goals, celebrate. Celebrate that. So when you accomplish a major goal, go out to dinner. Have, have, an, have an ice cream or a milkshake. Do something that's going to take you to that next level. Give you a prize. Make sure it's your goal, not somebody else's goal. You know, an example is if your, your significant other wants you to lose weight, but you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, I still look good. I don't really need to lose weight. Then you're not going to lose any weight. So don't make that a goal if you think if it's somebody else's goal for you. Make sure it's your goal so it aligns with your vision of yourself and your core values. Review those goals constantly. Make sure they're inspiring and make you want to leap out of bed in the morning and then put a date on it. Why well, putting a date on it, it makes it a priority. Say, I want to make a gazillion dollars by 2030. Okay. 
you know, you got some work to do. You know, you got some work to do because you got to get it done in the next 12 years. What does that look like? What are the things they got to do now? You know, I got to start with a dollar somewhere, so I need to go find a dollar. Let me go find a dollar. You know, so time bound, a specific goal in the next whatever months or years to get it done. Okay. You have your dreams. Within your dreams, you set specific objectives. With those objectives, you have clear goals to accomplish those goals to those dreams. So the ultimately, when you end the day on the beach, sitting out looking at the ocean, everything you've done has helped you accomplish those goals. And you, you know, this is where you want to look at your goals, make sure you're putting something forward and moving forward. You know, right now, just what are the top three goals that you're going to accomplish in the next week? Next five that you do in the week after that. And then you're going to present those to your mentor and say, these are my goals. Am I on the right track? Am I on the right track? So, you know, now it's time to get started. Don't waste another day, another moment. Go ahead and write down your goals. And what they're talking about here is if you eat a frog first thing in the morning, the rest of the day will be wonderful because the frog is now eating. You don't have to do it now. And if you have to eat the frog, don't look at it for too long. Meaning if you, you haven't set goals, Set a goal. You know, write one goal down right now, maybe two. That gets it done. You start writing goals, things that you want to get done in the next week. Just write them down, and once you get them done, you're like, oh, that was easy. Now you write down a few more, and you write down a few more, and just keep moving forward. Prioritize and keep track of your goals. It can be a simple journal where you just write them down every day. You could have, a, you know, with apps today, there's all kinds of tools out there to help you manage your time. And I think we spend more time managing the apps than we do actually doing anything else. It gives us something else to do. But when you set your goal, you're going to look at that app or anything and say, is this really helping me accomplish my goal? And then move on and say, you know what? Nope, I got I check. I got my goals. Let me move on to the next side, next thing. All right. Visualization techniques. Once you have your goals, you've written them down, you want to visualize yourself accomplishing those goals. This is what professional athletes do to realize that they can break a world record. They can swim the world record and break it. They can you know, run the 100-yard dash and break it because they visualize themselves running to accomplish that and make it happen. They visualize it actually happening. And what is amazing is that once you start to feel it, see it, actually happening, the world aligns with you and helps you accomplish that goal. Because now you start to see the things you need to see in order to accomplish that goal. So visualize you're actually doing it. So visualize you're sitting on the beach looking at the ocean and you don't have any worries because your bills are paid, you've got money in the bank, you're sitting next to your, your, your most important person in, in your life. The kids are on the way to visit you. All of those things are happening, and you're saying, okay, what do I got to do to make that happen? And that's what starts to happen, okay? You start to realize that you need to accomplish your career goals. Then you start to look at those career goals. What does it take for me to retire early or certain things? I need to invest. I need to buy some businesses. I need to do other things. What is it that you need to do? Write them down. What is that goal? Here. The people I'll go to for support, the resources I need. It could be money. It could be time. It could be stuff. Problems you might run into, how to eliminate those. And then people you're going to think that helped you get there along the way. So this is an, an example of how you can visualize what the goal is. So you write the goal in the middle. Who are you going to go to for support? What resources do I need? What problems are you going to have? How am I going to thank those people that help me? Action plan. Set your goals, take action steps, deadlines, and reward list. Motivators, stay motivated, be excited. You're getting things done. And what you're going to realize is that once you start writing goals down and accomplishing those goals, you're going to get used to victory and get used to success. You're not always going to be successful. You're going to have setbacks. But what do you do when you have setbacks? You set back and you say refocus and you reassess your goal and say, okay, I made a wrong decision. Now I need to make a different decision. Look at a mastermind group. Who are people that are going to challenge you and hold you accountable and put them in your mastermind group? They don't have to know they're in your mastermind group. They're just people you meet with on a regular basis. Find a mentor. They don't have to, again, they don't have to know that you are their mentor or they are your mentor. That 
you start to talk to them and they start to befriend them and work with them and start to realize that they're there to help you. Who's going to hold you accountable? Check in with yourself and celebrate your success. Start to move forward. Start getting this stuff done. As I mentioned before, setbacks, you just, things happen, but you just need to step back, reassess, and continue to move forward. You wouldn't have written the goal down if it wasn't important. And if it wasn't important, you wouldn't have even started in the first place. So if you're on your way to accomplishing a goal and something happens, there's a reason it happened, and you just need to step back and say, what decision did I make that I should make differently this time? And then go at it again. And go at it again. All right? So this is what I want you to do right now. To get started, think of 10 things you want to accomplish. Just write down 10. Narrow that list down to five. Prioritize that list of one to five. One being the most important, five being the least important. Choose the top three. Make sure those are your top three goals, and then pick number one and build a simple, detailed plan. And when you have that detailed plan for one goal, simply send me an email, connect with me on LinkedIn, message me on LinkedIn, and I'll take that look at that goal, and I'll discuss it with you. Discuss it with you. As you can imagine, there's lots of people going to be hearing this video, so just connect with me on LinkedIn, share with me one goal, not all of them, just one, and we'll talk about it and see if it's right. See if there's other things you could do right now to make a big difference, make a big difference. Thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. If one of your goals is to get CPSM certification, visit us at cpsmtraining.com forward slash store. Learn more about our training program and how it can help you accomplish your goals and make a big difference. I hope you've enjoyed this webinar. I look forward to seeing you on our next webinar, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you.